Hey guys, Jim here. We're going to take a look at something a little bit different this time. Uh, this is a new acquisition of mine, one I just purchased and just received. And the reason why it's going to be so different is because of the man behind it. Typically, when we talk about a knife maker, we're talking about somebody who is uh, A, only a knife maker, or B, comes up from some other somewhat similar uh, background, whether it be a machinist, a tool and die maker, uh, has done woodworking or metalworking, something in that craft. And what we're looking at here is a knife made by a gentleman that doesn't come from any of that. Uh, he actually is a self-taught knife maker, but his background is in jewelry and watchmaking. So, of course, you can see why I'm so excited uh, being in the watch industry myself. It really is a, a cool mix of a couple of different styles. And you're going to see the watchmaking touches in this knife in just a little bit. But before we continue on about the maker or the knife itself, let's talk about the packaging. This is how you'll receive your knife. You're going to get it in one of the cool micro pelican cases. And when you get that opened up, all the goodies that are inside will start here. This is going to be kind of your birth certificate, tells you the model number. Model number 13, this is number 3 that he's made. Your blade steel, which is CPM 20 CV. Handle, which is 6AL4V titanium. He's also using a D2 steel lock insert. And I love the way that he integrated it, and I, and I can't wait to show that to you. Handcrafted by Sergei Rogovets. There's his signature and the birth date. Then he's going to have his business card in there. Remember, Extreme Addiction does not have an E at the end of Extreme. So it's Extreme Addiction. And then uh, srmetalwork.com. And I'm going to hold his email address up here for a couple of seconds just so I don't have to keep answering it over and over in the comment section below. This is how you would contact him if you want to place an order. Now, we've got those things out of the way. Your knife will come packaged in a velvet cinched pouch. Kind of a classy presentation. But then there's also this little bonus sitting inside of the box. So we get this open, and we see that he's included a really awesome bronze lanyard bead. Very different. And you got to realize there are makers out there that are making rather simplified style beads, CNC machined, and charging anywhere from you know sixty-five dollars to one hundred and fifty dollars or even more. And this was uh, actually just included in the purchase. Didn't even expect it. Didn't know it was coming. So I thought that was pretty damn cool. And that's going to match with some of the bronze work done in the knife. Now, let's take a look at the knife. Because what you see here is something that I find to be extraordinarily beautiful. And it's also somewhat deceiving. Let's get that open. This knife, no matter how you look at it, looks smaller than it really is. What you're looking at is a three and three quarter inch blade. And it just, it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't feel like it. The way it holds in the hand, it does not feel like it's uh, eight and a half inches overall. Yet it is. It's just a miraculous feat to create something that both looks and feels so much more compact than it really is. Now, he's also done all of this beautiful millwork into the titanium and done some gorgeous, gorgeous, really, that's a word now, done some gorgeous anodization inside as well. Notice the oversized hardware. We'll talk about that in a moment. Anodizes all the way around the edges of the titanium. There are the custom standoffs with the channel milled all the way around, then custom anodized. And then you get to that gorgeous pocket clip. Not only is it a great shape that flows perfectly with the design of the handles, but there's a lot of small detail work done. Look at that front edge bevel that's been put on there all the way around. And then anodized only on the sides and bevel. Anodizing inside of the dots. More millwork there. And there's the integration of the lock bar insert. Not only has he done a fantastic job of integrating it into the lock, but if you'll notice the lock bar cutout, or 
where he's actually come back up and around to make space for that. I mean, it's really expertly done. Then you take a look at the pivot. Now, here's where the watchmaker comes out. Because what you're looking at is a pivot that has not been made in any traditional knife-making way. What you're looking at is a pivot that was made on a rose machine. Now, for those who don't know what a rose machine is, uh, you're, you're looking at a very large, I guess it's, it's a sort of a mill. So you take the object that you want to decorate, that you want to engrave. Let's say it's going to be a watch movement or a watch dial, which is what this machine is typically used for, or in this case, the pivot. So you're going to take that and you're going to put it onto this disc. And this disc is going to hold that in place. And then you're going to come at it with the engraving tool. And as you're coming in, you're, the machine allows you to very slightly move and go back and forth and repeat the same pattern all the way around in that circle and keep the same consistent pattern. Now, this is a very long and laborious process. It's not something quick like, you know, using uh, any kind of smart machinery. And it's something that takes a tremendous degree of skill. And again, that's not to say that using a CNC doesn't require skill. It's just a different type of skill. And this is a really good time to point out the fact that, um, yes, Sergei doesn't use CNC or water jet uh, at any part of his process. This knife is entirely handmade. Everything is hand ground. As a matter of fact, everything on this knife was made by Sergei himself except for the hardware that holds it together and the bearings around the pivot. Everything else was made by him. And that's going to be an important thing to factor in when you realize that I only paid $850 for this. Now again, as I say in other videos, I don't want to downplay the fact that $850 is not a lot of money. It is. It's a lot of money to spend on a pocket knife. But for those of us that routinely spend that much in collectible grade, high-quality custom knives, we realize that that's not really a lot of money, especially when you're talking about a completely handmade product. Let's get that laid back down. Now, where Sergei comes from is, as I mentioned, he is a jeweler, he is a watchmaker, and that's really what he's focused on for his entire life. He began making knives initially when he was about 14, 15 years old. And then when he, st when he took up the, uh, the jewelry industry, he just kind of gave it up for a long, long time. He recently went back to it about six months ago, and he's really only had been making knives for his friends and his family. And now only in the past six months, we're starting to see these come out and available to the public. When I caught across, when I came across his Instagram account, I went ape shit, and I did something that I don't normally ever do. When I see a knife that I love, let's say it's this model, I would say, okay, uh, I would like to please order a Model 13, and then we will collaborate and talk about the different ways uh, that the, that you know they're going to do the finishing or the materials or whatever else. This was a rare occasion where I saw a picture of the knife and I went, I want mine exactly like that. The same gold anodizing, the same uh, detail work all around it. I said, that's what I want. And thankfully, he was willing to go ahead and replicate the one that he had done before. So, I, I got to tell you, I, I could not be more impressed. I could not be happier. This is one of those rare occasions where the actual knife exceeded my expectations so much that I couldn't put it down. And I've been putting it in the pocket daily, all the time. And it's harder and harder and harder for me to let it go. One of the reasons I love carrying it is what you're seeing right here. It's lighter weight than you would expect. He has milled out the titanium on the insides in order to reduce some of the weight. And he's done a fantastic job all the way around. Let's see if we can get in close here and read what is scribed on the inside. Maybe a little hard to make all that out with the lighting that I have here. This was such a pleasant surprise, I can't even tell you. I knew I loved the look of it, 
But sometimes when you buy just based on looks and with a maker that you're not familiar with, that doesn't have a real track record that you can't reference and go, oh, well, these other 30 people certainly love the knife they got from so-and-so, so it's not a big risk. It was really going out on a limb. And I've been doing that a lot lately because I, I love to find makers that most people don't, that most people don't, don't know about or don't know about at all. And this is one of those great, wonderful little surprises. He's right now at about a six-month wait. And that's mainly because he has more than one business that he's operating. And I'm going to tell you right now, with the level of character, design, and quality that this exhibits, this should easily be seen on camera. And he should be getting flooded with orders. So I would not expect when you contact him to hear it's only a six-month wait. Because it's just going to get longer and longer and longer. The more I touch it, the more I play with it, the more I fall in absolute lust with it. So smooth. So fast. It's more of a push-button flipper. It's not really so much a light switcher. You can light switch it, and obviously you see it works just fine, but it really wants that light switch action. Great detent, superbly smooth action as you just saw. But it's those details. It's the details that matter. And to know that he is doing all of this by hand, so it's taking him longer. If he were to use a CNC, he could knock out this knife in you know probably less than half the time, but he's doing all of this millwork by hand on a manual mill. And the thing is, when I initially opened the box, if you would have been standing here next to me as I opened the box and asked me two questions, I would have been wrong about both. If you would have said, hey, what size is that blade? I would have said three and a half inches. It somehow conceals just how big it is. Even though you have a prominent harpoon up here, which really accentuates the end, of the, the, the tip of the blade. And the other question would have been, is this CNC or water jet? And I would have said, well, it has to be. Look at the level of precision in everything. And I would have been wrong. And the only other time I've ever picked up a knife, and it was so precise that I made the assumption it was CNC made, was on that Randy Doucette that I had uh, reviewed several months ago. And it turns out, He's doing everything by hand as well. It just takes a certain degree of skill to do either one of those things. And to know that somebody's taking that time and taking the slow process to do it by hand, it's quite amazing. And you know what? Time is money. That's why I say I'm so amazed at how inexpensively I bought this knife for. Because any other maker that I can think of that has a reputation... This would be anywhere between $1,000 and $1,200 for the amount of time and work and detail that goes into it. So to get it for $850, yeah, that's why I consider this to be such a great deal. Now, one of the things you might be wondering as you're staring at the, uh, at the images here, you might be thinking, oh, Jim, your thumb stud fell out. What the hell kind of shit is that, man? Nope. No thumb stud in there. What he decided to do was to break up this area here. He says it looked uh, like it was just too much real estate sitting there without anything done to it. So he just drilled a hole right through. But instead of just putting a big old hole in the blade, and we would see makers put a hole or a series of holes, and we've seen that plenty of times, he decided to take that hole and play with it a little bit. Ha <laughs> ha, giggity. And he put a, a bronze ring inside of the hole, which obviously matches very well with the bronze anodizing, the golden bronze anodizing here, and in the standoffs. Great details to the standoffs as well. If you're wondering about the clip being a fully sculpted titanium clip and its usability, I've carried this now uh, a few times and it is a dream. 
it drops right in the pocket. You're not having to force it in. You're not having to pry it open to get it in there. It has enough retention where it doesn't feel like it's going to slip out if you squat down to pick something up. It looks great hanging out of the pocket. Looks like a piece of pocket jewelry. It really is an exceptionally made knife in every respect. And that was the biggest reason that I wanted to get this video done. I still have probably 10 other knives that I have to do videos on before this one came in. I had to share the experience with everybody. I wanted people to know. Because it's not often that I can get my hands on a knife that this, that this thoroughly excites me. Listen, when I make a video, it's because the knife excites me. It's because I paid money for a product and I feel justified for the amount of money that I paid. Or I've gotten a chance to borrow a knife from a friend, from a fellow collector, and I'm so excited about it, I want to get it out there. So no, you're, you're not watching videos on my channel where I'm going, Oh my God, this thing fucking sucks and it's this and it's that. I'm going to love everything I bring out because that's what I choose to bring out. There have been knives that I did not like. And there was no reason to keep those videos up on my channel. This is one that has so overwhelmed me that I felt the need to push off all the others that I have and get this out there. Because I want people to experience it with me. I want people to see a maker that they're not familiar with and see the level of work that he's capable of. And to know that it's a maker that you can actually call up or email and get an order in. Listen, I love bringing out exotics to you guys, bringing out amazing knives from makers that their books are closed and sealed and done and nobody's ever going to get shit. But it sucks sometimes to have to say that, to go, hey, I've got an amazing knife in my hand, but you, you, you can't order anything from him. I've been enjoying a lot lately bringing out makers' products that are amazing that you can actually order from. There is that D2 steel lock insert right there. Even that, you can't... Wow, holy shit, I've never really felt for that before right now. You don't feel a difference between the titanium and the steel. It's like he has perfectly matched it in every way. I like that he's using the inside relief cut for the lock bar. Doesn't take away from the beauty of the outside of the handles. Oversized screws. He says he prefers using backs, uh, excuse me, uh, prefers using standoffs over a backspacer because he feels that it gives you a more solid and rigid frame. Whether that's true or not, that's certainly his belief. And he loves using the oversized hardware to emphasize the strength of the build of this knife. Because when you look at this, especially when it's open, the shape of it, the beautiful, sexy, flowing lines, you're not immediately thinking, oh my God, what a tank this thing is. But it really is. It is thick and it's beefy and there's a lot going on to it. It may not be a Dyerware or a Medford, but hot damn, it's real close. This almost feels like something that would come out of Jake Hoback's shop. Overbuilt, nice and tough, but somehow retains these sleek and sexy lines. I got to tell you guys, if you're looking for something different, if you're looking for something that is absolute elite high-end build, look no further. I mean, Sergey is really, really knocking it out. And to, to just to show you how much faith and confidence I have in the popularity that he's going to achieve from making knives like this, before I made the video, I sent a message to a few of my friends and said, guys, you need to get in on his books right now before I make a video, because I think when people see his work in HD, whether you listen to what I'm saying or not, you can put this shit on mute for all I care, and you look at the beauty of the knife, how could you not want something made by him? But I immediately contacted him, and I said, I really, really want two spots on your books. I know what's getting ready to happen. I know that I'm not going to be able to get shit. So I would like another Model 13, except I want to go even more premium, more high-end, Timascus, things like that. We're going to get a little crazy with it. And I said, I'd like another spot for somewhere down the line. Doesn't matter when. It could be a year, two years, three years from now. For a future model that you might be making, by the time you finally get to my name again, you might be offering different models. So I don't want to lock myself into 
this one. So I'm going to have at least two of these. I'm telling you guys, <laughs> it's for me to be addicted, for me to not want to carry other knives, especially during a time where I have accumulated more knives in, in, in this small amount of time than I ever had before in my life, and to keep going back. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I've been carrying this thing a lot, even carrying it to work. It's one of those knives that I absolutely have to carry. I have to feel it. When you put this in your hand, I don't care how you're trying to hold it. It just fits, and it feels great. And it's another one of those knives that, you know, your knife buddies are going to appreciate all of the incredible work, but the non-knife people that may see it still find it to be beautiful. And it's really hard sometimes to find that balance, to find that one piece that can impress both knife people and non-knife people. Non -knife people. I'm not sure why I couldn't say that properly. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here for now. I've got some other stuff I've got to get accomplished, uh, and I do want to get some more videos done soon. So thank you, as always, for watching. I do certainly appreciate it. Thank you for all the recent follows on Instagram. Uh, for those that have not had a chance to find me out there, uh, my uh, Instagram handle is at Jim Skelton TV. It's not at Jim Skelton. There is somebody else that's just Jim Skelton out there, so don't go following him. He has a private account. Mine is public. You can, you can see my pictures without even following me. But please do follow me so you can keep up with all the new shit that I'm doing. All right, guys. There is your last look at it up close and personal. And I am out of here. See you on the next video.